last thing I wanted to share with you is when God removes manna. Joshua chapter 5 verse 12, it says the following. Then the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land. And the children of Israel no longer had manna, but they ate the food of the land of Canaan that year. In the beginning, God promised to Abraham, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Aaron. He didn't promise them manna. He promised them milk and honey. Manna was not God's plan or God's promise. It was God's process and a temporary provision. What do you do when God gives you something that provides for your needs and then it stops? Manna was not God's plan. The reason why is because it fed nobody else except the people who received it. Milk and honey was an overflow. Manna is just enough. Manna was miraculous. It was from heaven. But God's real promise is for the blessing and prosperity to come from the earth. Manna required folding hands and no work. Prosperity requires creativity, planning, hiring, thinking, doing, digging, doing something. That is why manna is not God's plan for your life. It's God's temporary provision until you get to the season where God wants you to be. Manna is when you get free stuff coming from heaven. And we love that. We love the welfare mentality. We love that when somebody, God just gives it to us. The problem with manna is it not, it's not what God promised you. When you were a child, it's not what God promised you. When you were a teenager and you encountered God, manna cannot help orphans. It only helps you. Manna cannot help the city. It only helps me. And manna requires me not to work. That's why Israel complained all the time in Egypt, in promise, excuse me, in wilderness, because they didn't work. They didn't build anything. They didn't manage anything. They didn't occupy anything. They didn't fight anybody. They didn't fight any battles. That's why they complained all day. The only thing they had is miraculous manna. And God knew, I cannot build sons and soldiers if they only eat manna. That's why the first thing that God does in the promised land is He removes that which He gave them. And he stops manna. Why? Because the produce of the land was ready. The shovels were ready. The vineyards were ready. The wells were ready. See, provision is when you have just enough. But I want to tell you something. Some of you in this season, in this year, you are moving out of manna. For some of the jobs even you had that supplied for your needs and you were grateful to God, at one time you thank God for that job. And that's going to come to an end. And it's not because God hates you. It's not because God is going to throw you under the bus. It's because your season has shifted and you're stepping into the promised land. Hallelujah. What is the promised land? Promised land is when God doesn't give it to you and you do nothing. Promised land is where you work. Promised land is where you write, create, build. Promised land is where you think. Promised land is where you take classes. Because promised land, you don't get stuff given to you. You work. And a lot of us have, have felt like work is a curse. No, 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 my friend. Work is not a curse. Work came before curse. God created you to work. In fact, God works. When we will go to heaven, we will also work with God. Your, your work utilizes your creativity. It utilizes your education. It utilizes your gift and your personality. Promised land will not work without you working. That means you're going to have to write. You're going to have to dream. You're going to have to create. You're going to have to build a business. You're going to have to have a plan. You're going to have to get land. You're going to have to rent. You're going to have to work. The beautiful part is that God won't give you manna. That's just enough for your family. God will give you milk and honey. That's enough for others. And for you. I want to encourage every person today. If you're living on just enough. And God is supplying your needs. I want you to get ready. Because God is going to shift your season. And sometimes the way He shifts your season is you get laid off. Or you get fired. Now, if you get fired because you show up late and you don't do your work, that's not God taking off the manna. That's God disciplining you for not doing your job. 
So don't go ahead praising God. I just want to praise God. No, no, no. You're not punctual. And you're not doing a good job. You're lazy. <laughs> That's not praising God. You need to be at the altar repenting and say, God, change me, transform me, and make me like Christ. But if God switches your takes the manna off of the menu it's because something is better is coming up that's connected to your gift your potential and what god has for you in jesus name there was a story of first kings chapter 17 verse 7 it says the following and it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land then the word of the lord came to him elijah saying arise go to zarephath which belongs to sidon and dwell there See, I have commended a widow there to provide for you. Maybe you're like Elijah. You lived on manna. It was providing for your needs. And you're like, man, I'm so grateful for manna. But the brook dried up. The manna stopped. And God speaks to Elijah. And he doesn't say, I want you to right now pray for the brook to have more water. God did not instruct Joshua to say, pray for more manna to come. God says, shift things. Move on. There's something better that's waiting for you. Don't sit there and wait for the brook to have more water. Move forward to the widow's house because I have commanded her to provide for you. Watch this. When Elijah was at the brook, ravens fed him and the brook gave him water. But nobody else was affected because of his provision. Provision doesn't help others. It only helps you. And while you have a praise report, other people cannot join you to praise your God. The prosperity is when he went to the widow's house. And not only he was provided, the widow was provided and the son was raised from the dead. That is prosperity. That's why God will take us from the brook to the widow's house. Why? Because God is not just interested that your bills are paid for. God is interested that you hire others and their bills are paid for. See, God is not just interested that you have life, John 10, 10, but that you will have it more abundantly. Because if you are filled, it's for you. If you overflow, it's for others. If I pour water into a cup and it comes to an end, anything that's overflow spills outside of the cap, cup. God wants you to have overflow because anytime you have overflow, you hire more people. Anytime you have overflow, you share it with others. God knows as a Christian, when your cup runs over, other people will drink from your overflow. And that's why God takes Elijah and says, your brook is dry. But I want you to go and help a widow. I want you to go and raise her son. I want you to supply her needs as well as yours. And many of us, we're scared of the overflow. Some of you, you come from a religious mindset where you're like, the word overflow throws you into a cold heat or cold sweat. You're like, ooh, prosperity, ooh. If you're afraid of overflow, the root of that fear is pure selfishness. Pure laziness. Because overflow tells you and teaches you to think differently. When you were an employee, it was very easy. Show up at nine, leave at five. But when you become a boss, that's not that easy. Because now you have to create things. It requires you to step out of your laziness. And it requires you to be a blessing to others. God created you to have overflow. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. That's just enough. That's manna. But then when I go to verse 2, verse 3, and then verse 4 going through the valley, I go to verse 5, Psalm 23, my cup runs over. That is God's promise. God's plan is not manna. God's plan is milk and honey. God's plan is not that you just go through just enough. It might be where you are. It might have been where you've been for 40 years. In any way am I saying that is not God moving in your life. He is moving in your life. He is supplying your needs according to your riches and your glory. I'm just asking if He pulls manna off of menu, don't panic. He has something better. He has His ultimate plan for you, where you will have more than enough for others to help others in your life and be a blessing to those around you who don't have. You will be somebody's miracle. You will be somebody's answer to prayer. Somebody will be applying for a job and your company will be the company God will use to answer their prayer. In there, you had a miracle. In here, you become a miracle. 